three, two, one. Uh, welcome to the European Jenkins Docs Office Hours. Uh, today is July 7th. Uh, and uh, today we have a uh, little bit more of an agenda than we have lately. Um, we have a couple of action items that Mark will share, uh, just quick status update on. Uh, we have some uh, exciting news, a lot of stuff going on. We had our 2.358 release this week, which now is uh, requiring uh, at least Java 11. Uh, we have the Jenkins 2.346.2 LTS release coming out. Uh, that's going to include the change log and upgrade guide. Uh, Vihan will have, if uh, will be able to share the Google Summer Code progress updates that he has. Uh, we have some additional improvements and uh, enhancements that we're going to be working on for Java 11. Um, it's not a one and done situation. There's still other pieces that need to be updated, um, and Basil Crow is working on that for us. Uh, and then uh, we also have a proposal by Gavin Mogan, who's one of the Jenkins governance board members uh, about enhancing and creating a new commercial support site. Um, the current one is out of date and not necessarily the best uh, resource for users. So creating an updated one based off on the stories.jenkins.io uh, will go a long way in helping to improve that experience. Uh, and then there was a pull request submitted recently that uh, suggested some changes to the navigation, banners, headers, footers, carousel sections, uh, pretty much any part of the background on the Jenkins site. Uh, and they're looking for feedback. We've got some uh, Mark and some other folks have already responded, let them know uh, about recent font changes and other pieces that are important in that case. Um, but We'll go over that in time. So uh, first things first, uh, Mark, if you wanna just give us a quick update on the first two items there under action items. Sure, still no progress, sorry. Yep, no worries. Okay, uh, great. And so then uh, again, the 2.358 weekly release line uh, was released this week. So now that requires at least Java 11, it also offers Java 17 support. Um, no java 8 is no longer supported and that will be reflected by the lts in september when it catches up and matches the weekly release line requirements um, i'm actually i've also gone through and added some uh, context to the documentation regarding that letting folks know that uh, there is that distinction between the weekly release and uh, lts releases um, so uh, hopefully everyone's uh, very clear on that, and they have, if they have questions, they can direct them properly. Um, but that should be fairly clear. Uh, we have the Jenkins June, the July LTS coming up, the 2.346.2 change log and upgrade guide, which the pull request has been submitted. Uh, Mark and I have been working on the content, reviewing, and uh, just making sure that everything looks solid and clear for uh, the release itself. Um, the updates, the, I made a suggestion, it's been applied, so, uh, but everything else looks great. So that should be pretty straightforward at this point. Uh, Vihan, uh, would you like to show us uh, or take us through the Google Summer of Code and what's, what you've been up to since last we spoke? Mm, sure. So a couple of pull requests related to Jenkins that I got merged this week. And the first one being about the uh, data types details so that has been merged and we can see the reflected changes on the website now mm -hmm. so uh everything has been built successfully and all the documentation has been updated accordingly all the ascii docs then this week i also created a pull request to add a search filter on the pipeline steps reference page um so basically this uh, steps filter will uh, filter out the content uh, on, the, on the page dynamically and like yeah if you could demonstrate that um, something like that so all the content would get filtered accordingly and basically uh, the advantages of this over a normal browser like search would be uh, if for example you search git and you want to see the related plugins or the steps um, when you search that on the browser you get the results but the other things which are not relevant don't get removed so you have to navigate between those things top down and it's quite tedious so now i think this makes it slightly easier to understand uh, to find the piece of information that user wants. 
So this was the pull request that was merged on Wednesday, I guess, uh, yesterday. Uh, Kevin, and guess, Kevin, you uh, you have to show the mark weight thing. All right, the one that the one that caused me pain and anguish, and that Vihan has made my life better. Search for the oh. word checkout. No, no, go back oh. to that. Oh, that, okay. that pipeline steps reference. Search for the word checkout. Okay, so in order to find things about checkout, checkout is one of the most commonly used operations in the pipeline. One of the most common. So I would search for the word checkout. In the old days, I would press Control F. I would enter the word checkout. And it would find the Bitbucket server integration first, which is not relevant. It would find Plastic SCM second, which is also not relevant to what I was trying to do. Finally, it would show me Pipeline SCM step. I am now four, four keyboard interactions in and a little frustrated. Now, what Vihan has done is I type one word, check out, and there it is right on my screen. I didn't have to scroll and navigate. Vihan, really, thank you. This is great. Sure. Yeah, I'm this looks it, incredible. I'm glad it helped actually. So yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I was actually checking it out too, earlier myself, Ihan. It's really nice, really smooth. It's very responsive and absolutely makes it a much nicer experience trying to find anything on the steps reference page. So that that's that's terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you have anything else on the Google on the projects you're working on beyond or does that cover everything uh, for us today? Um, yeah, one more thing that the release of the pipeline metadata utils has been complete. So John Mark helped me with that. And now we can see the uh, artifact on the artifact tree, Jenkins artifact tree. And uh, perhaps the next thing would include um, uh, inculcating incrementalify as Mark showed us last week. So uh, John Mark said that he'll take care of that. So the CD part is left, uh, yet to be done, but since there are not many releases that are happening for that repository right now, I think that becomes low priority for us. And adding some tests to it um, are some things on my agenda right now for it. Vihan, for my clarity, do you mm -hmm. intend to replace some capabilities that are some classes that are currently inside the pipeline steps doc generator with references to this library? Is that how you're envisioning it will work? Yes. Ah, so okay. we can get, uh, so we can replace the mock Jenkins or Java, mock extension list or Java and the hyper local plugin manager, the main body of the, from which we can actually execute the reactor and query the plugin manager to get the results. So these three classes would not be required in the main repository any longer. So yeah, this, that was it from my side. This was the week's progress. Awesome, thank you so much. It looks like there's been a lot. So that's like, very exciting. And uh, yeah, very much kudos to you, Rihan. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda, uh, just some uh, Java 11 further improvements that we're working on. Uh, the Jetty upgrade from version 9X to 10X and um, a few other dependencies, necessities that are being, uh, that need to be upgraded. Um, Basil Crow is helping us and working on those upgrade and enhancements. Um, again, this is not something that can be done very easily or in one go, it is over time. So uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint in that regard. Um, and then, uh, while Mark's typing out uh, that information or Mark, if you wanna, would you be able to share a little insight on that? Yeah, it's just the the this was a, a a fun improvement that comes as a result of the Java 11 work. The Jetty project announced the end of community support for Jetty 9 about a month ago. Uh, there, our timing is really good to get off Jetty 9. They were willing to support us. Uh, we're not we're we're a little higher on their list than just a community project, but getting off Jetty 9 and onto Jetty 10 is a real positive. Unfortunately, in this case, our automated tests were testing a particular aspect of WebSockets, but weren't testing in a production-like environment. It was discovered that there was this test gap. Jesse Glick and Basil Crow have been working together to close that test gap and to get ready to do the upgrade. We hope that by 2.359 next week, we'll be on Jetty 10, but if not, a week or two later. And so nice benefit and getting us onto more modern version of a very important core library. 
that also reduces the the burden on the, the maintainers of the jetty library so that they don't have to worry about jenkins continuing to use just jetty 9. great thank you uh, and uh is there any other, anything else that we should know about the java 11 language extensions uh, in this case or yeah in sure this far? well and this one may impact us in ways that that are, are documentation related what Basel's discovered is a, a, a leading Jenkins user, Steve Hill, has implemented a thing with a tool called Open Rewrite. Open Rewrite is an automation system that will do apply code refactorings. And the reason this matters to documentation is we've got a pending pull request for a tutorial on how to modernize a Jenkins plugin. And this user, Steve, created an open rewrite rule to express one of those modernization steps through automation. Now it doesn't do automated evaluation of the quality of the, of the change, but it does perform the change. And so it gives the user, the, the contributor, a jump start on, oh, I ran this open rewrite rule and it performed these code transformations for me. Now I should focus on testing to be sure it works, to be sure it's well behaved. And then I submit a pull request. So it's it's taken away or it's re, has the potential to reduce the complexity of some of these modernization steps by letting a machine do it for us. That's pretty awesome. Definitely sounds like it can be uh, very useful for us uh, if we can get that kind of uh, uh, standardized or something would be really helpful. Right, yeah, well, and and Steve Hill has done some other cool things around Jenkins automation and infra automation. So yes, very grateful to him for his work. Fantastic, thank you, Mark. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, so um, just uh, a couple of days ago, or within the last week, uh, Gavin Mogan, who's part of the Jenkins Governance Board, uh, had made a suggestion about revamping and creating a new commercial support page for vendors, uh, vendor support page. Um, essentially looking to make sure that uh, if we're going to have a page like this for support, uh, that it's up to date, offers something uh, that the user can you know, filter through, navigate, a bit more cleanly uh, and more importantly things like direct links to the support um, understanding what the users are looking for understanding what the makeup of the user base is who's looking for help what they're looking for help with um, and is looking for just general feedback on anything else that might be worth tracking uh, as you can see there's already been a few suggestions and comments about uh, the direction that we can take as far as the support page goes. And Gavin's really receptive to any ideas. So by all means, feel free to share uh, if you have any suggestions, any experiences, uh, anything that might be worth noting that hasn't been put down already, even if it is, that's fine. Um, but this is something that's really, it's gonna be nice to have after the stories.jenkins.io pages finish up. Uh, and would go a long way in helping just reassure and reaffirm a lot of the Jenkins uh, resources and functionalities with those external partners. So uh, this is, yeah, like I said, this is just something uh, that we've uh, just started working on and uh, I've been working with, I've been sharing some suggestions with Gavin as well. Uh, so yeah, that, that's something that uh, we have something to look forward to in the future. Uh, and then uh, the other item that uh, came up this week is a PR that had been submitted request, uh, looking for some changes to the navigation and uh, some other parts of the actual Jenkins pages. Uh, so the preview site, uh, so this is the background that is set up in the preview, the fonts changed, there are some other items. Um, however, there's been some other recent changes to the system fonts, for instance, with Jenkins. Uh, and with the way things are currently going in the world and with Jenkins, uh, we wanna make sure that everything's on point and um, aligned for messaging, for 
uh, branding, everything else. Um, so Mark and uh, some others have commented on the post and shared their insights and recommendations, suggestions for what can be done. Um, so there's definitely some uh, merit to talking about this and discussing the uh, image usage and, and just overall branding color scheme, et cetera. Uh, so this is another thing that uh, any feedback, any suggestions uh, that can be shared will be much appreciated uh, and will go a long way in helping to determine what sorts of improvements we can make in the future or sooner than later, if there's something that uh, we can agree on uh, now. Um, yeah, uh, now Mark, I, uh, I did get a chance to look through these a little bit. Um, is there anything that you wanted to uh, point out or make note of on these in, uh, in any specifics or? Just looking for community feedback. I am, I am notoriously bad at assessing quality of design and others may feel similarly inadequate. So those who are good in design, like Zbigniew Konechny, who is, whose comments are later on, he's very, very good at design. And he's very, so I give great weight to, to his opinions and, and his observations. So likewise, Tim Jacom and Jan Farachik are also very, very good in, in this kind of thing, whereas I'm really bad. So I am unwilling to merge it without getting feedback from other people, encourage other people to give their feedback. That's fair. I'm not so great with design either, so I feel you entirely on that. Um, thank you very much, Mark. Great. Um, so that covers the agenda that we have uh, written down for today. Uh, did anyone have any other points, topics, or items that they'd like to add to it or, or uh, bring up? And uh, as a side note, um, the community brown bag was earlier today and was a really lovely experience. Bruno actually gave a wonderful talk about the coffee papers and how to really uh, enhance your abilities and chances with them. How you can- Thank you so much, uh, Kevin. Yeah, of course. I thought it was really nice. And I think that that's a lovely resource for anyone to have. So um, Mark, I think that's gonna be available uh, somewhere for I actually I don't know because that that was Cloudby's internal, Kevin. But, ah, okay. Never but, mind. But it was an but excellent we presentation. Do it as were, if you want to. <laughs> and, and I think I think we may consider that Bruno is having you do it publicly because I think it's a great a great concept and how to get accepted at talks is a good idea. Yeah, and um, I think and I also just appreciated a lot of the. Uh, kind of the self affirmations that you're sharing and, and how to um, take care of yourself when you're also trying to uh, share all your excitement and knowledge with everyone else. So it was really nice. Thank you. Um, but yeah, if that covers everything for today and uh, we've made it through the agenda, I think that we could stop the video uh, recording, Mark, if you'd like.